What's good, guys? We back at it again with another video. I just see from the title. Today, we have part two of my AAU circuit story series. You know, obviously, yesterday, part one was about getting on the circuit, getting on Game Elite, you know, these shoe teams. Today is going to be focused on my experience actually playing on the court, things that I saw that I learned from being on the court, things that I saw from being in my first live period and being around that many high-level players for the first time in my career. I'll also tell you the story about how I was actually going to quit basketball like completely. So let's jump into it. So like I said in part one, the Game Elite workouts, practices, all of that was so intensive. Like it was really like it was real work we were putting in in the gym. We'll talk about the first live period. Going into that, I kind of had, I had some level of confidence because for the last couple of weeks, I never put in that much work in my life. Like the type of stuff we were doing in there was crazy. Like tile pushes. If you know, you know, I know, you know, our high school program at, that I'm at now, like, they know about that personally for me. I know they hate me for it, but I took that from G. So going into my first live session, I have some semblance of confidence, but at the same time, I'm still kind of nervous because I have no idea what to expect, right? I'm not sure which session was first when I was on 16U because we played in Dallas, uh, Indy, I think it was somewhere else, and then of course Vegas, right? But first session was either Dallas or Indy. And I remember, again, it's kind of crazy, same thing like when I first walked in for the Game Elite workout. I remember walking into my first live session, the first live session I'd ever been to, ever seen in my life, and I was legitimately in shock. Like just to see that many players, and when I say players, I mean like players, like walking around. I remember walking around Suwani and I see Bowl Bowl walking around Suwani. Bowl Bowl. At this point, I, I think I must be like six, 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 seven. So I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty tall for my age. And I'm looking at him, Bowl Bowl, younger than me walking around and I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like, this is where I'm at now. Like, this is where these players have been my entire life because I've never seen them before. Not to mention, this is the reason why, you know, my story times are a little different. Like throughout my career, I don't know what it was. I would just always take pictures. I think it might've been me or my dad, right? They, he took this picture right here of Coach K and the new, the next coach of Duke for, I think he starts this year, Coach John Shire. Like, I remember that, like seeing that, seeing them courtside. And when you see all these top coaches, you see Calipari, everybody in my first live session, honestly, this is when the nerves started to started to kick in. And all of a sudden I'm a, ooh, like I, I've never played in front of coaches before. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Keep in mind when I'm saying this, I'm seeing Calipari and Kay. I'm seeing them like walking around, watching other people. They weren't at our 16U games. And to be honest, like I say that when I was playing 16U, probably the most amount of coaches we probably had was maybe seven to eight. Like it wasn't how it was a year later, but at the time, just those seven to eight coaches for my first couple live periods, I will say it was an adjustment period, of course, you know, playing against higher level competition, but also I had to learn how to play in front of coaches and not think whenever I miss a layup, oh, did he write that down? Or like, are they not going to recruit me? Or, you know what I'm saying? At the time I still was having problems catching passes. I might drop a pass and I'm like, Bro, I'm never going to college. Like, I'm never going to college. Keep in mind what I said. Some of my teammates already had offers. So I'm looking at them kind of like, you know, we're the same age. We're in the same grade. You have offers. You have stars next to your name. And I don't have anything, right? So I'm like, maybe I'm behind the eight ball. Maybe this basketball thing isn't for me. Like, this is also when I started having that mindset. Like, yeah, you know, maybe I should have played, you know, for my teammates' dad, at least on that team. I get all the touches. I can score a lot more points. I might not be playing in the greatest of tournaments, but I get to touch the ball and I feel like I'm a part of something, like a part of the team. Game Elite, like, yeah, we were playing in front of the coaches in the right tournaments, but, you know, I wasn't really making a huge impact. A couple weeks later, we're playing in Suwannee Sports Academy, Court 7, which is kind of crazy. This is why you got to be paying attention throughout the whole, like, story time because everything kind of built on each other. Like, there were a lot of quote-unquote coincidences that would just happen. I'm playing this team by the name of the South Carolina Hornets, right? I go to the tip. I'm lining up against a kid. He's like 6'3", 6'4", not too swole, but, you know, he's kind of big, but he's the tallest player on their team, tallest player. And I'm the center on our team, so I'm like, oh, yeah, I got him, I got him. Tip goes up. The kid gets it, right? And I start seeing him running, like, around, like, this way, right, towards the rim. Let's just say the rim is, like, right here. I start to see him running from half court, which is going to be back here. So I'm chasing him, and then all of a sudden, I see him look up. So I turn around, and I see the ball in the air. Second I turn back around, look at him, boom. No lie, no lie. I turn to one of my teammates, one of y'all got him, one of y'all got him. The craziest thing is, that player turned out to be Zion Williamson, right? 
And because that team was the South Carolina Hornets, I didn't realize this until years later. You know, who else was probably on that team? We just didn't know him at the time because he wasn't who he is now. Ja. Ja. Keep that in mind. Keep that story in mind. We played Z when he was 15U playing against us 16U. Keep that story in mind, right? It might not seem like it's important now. Just keep that in mind. So then we go to Vegas, right? We go to Vegas. I'm going to be honest. I went into Vegas with no offers. Some of my teammates went into Vegas with no offers. After maybe our first couple games, some of my other teammates who had none with me got an offer. I was like, bro, like I, I can't get nothing. Like I can't get nothing. And I'm hooping. Like I told y'all before, I've never been like a big scorer. I've been more of the, you know, the hustle guy, the, you know, rim runner, getting a lot of rebounds, block shots. But in Vegas, my 16U AAU season in Vegas, I'm picking and popping. I'm shooting mid-range jumpers. I got a clip of it right here. You know I will never lie. I'm shooting, you know, step backs off the block, all type of stuff. Like, I'm doing all this. So I'm thinking, man, like I'm getting an offer for sure. I even had one of my assistant coaches on our team told me, like, after a game, like, you're going to get your first offer after this session. Like, you know that, right? You know that, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I know. I know, I know. I get back from Vegas, and when I tell you I'm on my phone all day, every day looking at a screen at my phone screen all day waiting for a call a text message a, a twitter follow a twitter dm an email i don't care what it is i was just waiting for some school to get in contact with me because i was like bro i just hooped like in vegas somebody has to reach out it didn't happen like it, it just didn't happen it didn't happen remember it, like around june 15th a little bit after that i got one call from like the university of vermont right that was it that was it. At that time, I'm I'm still training a little bit, but I'm like, bro, what am I training for? Like this basketball thing, I don't I don't know if it's for me. Like I, I just really don't know. After I had just played in Vegas and I still didn't get any more calls, at this point is really when I'm like, all right, I don't think basketball is for me. Like I, I think I need to, you know, start to lean into academics because I don't think athletics is gonna be, you know, my my path. So here's what I did. We had a game elite workout on a Sunday. We were supposed to be going after church. Woke up that Sunday early earlier than usual laid in bed for a little bit was really like thinking about it and was like yeah you know what i'm done like i'm done like i'm not getting any offers like i'm done right going to my parents room and i tell them i'm done playing basketball like you know our rule their rule was you have to play at least one sport so i'm like i'll, I'll figure it out i don't care if i gotta if i gotta you know go swim or something of course i ain't know how to swim at the time i'm like bro i'll go swim i don't know like it doesn't matter i just i just don't want to play basketball anymore they go okay okay get a black trash bag, get a black trash bag and go round up everything Game Elite has ever given you. I got, I'm talking about shoes, socks, compressions, you know, track suits, whatever it was. I put everything in a black trash bag. After church, we pull up to Wheeler High School. Keep in mind, this is during the workout. So I'm walking in with a trash bag. People kind of looking at me like, why he's like, why you got a trash bag with him? My whole family walk in there. G actually step out of the workout for a couple moments to talk to us. We go into uh, Coach Lip office. You know, Coach Lipscomb, shout out Coach Lipscomb, uh, legendary coach for Wheeler, if you guys didn't know. So we walk into his office and we sitting there and I'm telling G like, G like, what's up? I'm like, yeah, like, I don't think basketball is for me. I don't think I can hoop anymore. Like here, here's your stuff. Like I tried to hand him the bag. He wouldn't take the bag. Basically what he was explaining to me was how much potential I had you know, how, how much he saw in me, how good he could see me becoming. And then he says this phrase that I will never forget. He says this phrase to me that I will never forget ever. Keep in mind this old, that story that I told a while ago. He tells me, he goes, he says, yeah, he's like, just give me one more year. Give me one more year. You're going to be the anchor of a Rolls Royce team. Those are the, that's the exact phrase G told me. You are going to be the anchor of a Rolls Royce team. Like, thank God I, I listened to him. I listened to him, and this is where we really got started. Fast forward a couple months, and I'm playing in hoop scene camps. I'm playing in all this stuff, including, you know, as of course, you know, your high school games, high school tournaments. So I'm starting to get a little bit of buzz in Georgia. Like, my name's starting to buzz a little bit. I still haven't got my first offer. As we're getting into AAU season, first couple practices, AAU, one specific practice, kid shows up, but this kid is like 6'5", but his face looks familiar. And I'm like, Aren't you the kid from, yeah, what Zion Williamson did that one practice with Game Elite? It was some stuff we'd never seen before, honestly. And this is all my teammates, everybody. When he drove down for that one practice at Wheeler, what he did in that gym, 
was some stuff we hadn't seen before. So for me, that was kind of confirmation. Like, bro, G, G wasn't lying to me. Like, G was not lying. This really a Rolls Royce team. We had Darius Perry. He went four-star, went to Louisville straight out of high school. Elias Harden, four-star, went to Xavier straight out of high school. We had Ticket, DeAndre Ballard, went to Florida straight out of high school. We had Z at the four, of course. And then we had me at the five. That was our starting five. So we had high major starting five. Of course, I'm the only player that ended up going mid-major. But for it finally starting to click in my head, like, okay, like I said, G wasn't lying to me. I'm going to have an opportunity to get an offer because with that starting five I just named, I told you guys before, like the seven, eight coaches that I, that we had on 16U, 17U, turned into 20, 30 at every single game. I mean, every single game. And this is where we'll get back into that conversation about, okay, should I go join an uh, EYBL, 3SSB, UAA team, or should I stay with a non-sponsor team? Because for that 17U year, our first session was in Dallas. And I remember specifically like those three starters that were four stars and Z was the five star after every game, they got interviewed by the Adidas media 24 seven, like ES, like it really didn't matter. Like they were getting all four of them, interviews, camera, you know what I'm saying? Microphone, recording, all type of stuff. Still don't have any offers. I'm not getting any attention. I'm not getting a lot of touches, of course, with the roster I just named. So I got to show my work to coaches by doing what? Rim running, playing defense, you know what I'm saying? Like showing that I have energy out there on the court. That's how I have to show my work. So I'm still thinking, ah, you know, I, should I? But at the same time, I'm playing in front of, like I said, 30, 40 coaches. We got everybody in the gym whenever we play watching us. So at the same time, it's like, yeah, you're not getting that. But everybody's eyes are on you at some point at some point something's got to break funny enough my first offer didn't come you know after a game and i got a phone call hey you know we want to offer you a scholarship it didn't come after a practice and my aau coach pulled me to the side yeah so and so said they really like you they want to extend the offer to you no i had a scheduled workout with wofford university after school this was either in april in may of my junior year going into my senior year my head coach my high school head coach tells me you know the head coach of wofford is coming to see you work out after school right? Because I've done a lot of workouts. I had done a lot of workouts that entire junior season. A lot of schools that came in in the morning saw me work out, saw me work out after school, but I still had never gotten an offer because it was all assistant coaches, right? This is the first time a head coach is coming to Cal High School, you know what I'm saying, to watch me work out. So that whole day I'm excited because I'm like, this could be the day I can get my first offer. I'm nervous, of course, but at the same time, it's like, this could be the day. Getting to school at 3.30, I go down to the gym, I'm happy, I'm da 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 I'm nervous, but like I said, I'm excited. Get my shoes on, I'm warming up, I'm ready to go, ready to go. The head coach of Wofford walks into the gym, right? He walks into the gym. He doesn't even come all the way on the court. He stays closer to the doors, right? He's like, yeah, Brian, like, yeah, come here, like da 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 I swear, I swear it was crazy, it was crazy. He literally, he just tells me, he goes, he goes, uh, yeah, you know, I don't need to see you work out. I just wanted to come and tell you in person that we wanted to extend you a full scholarship offer. When I, I was like, how, what I just did just now, silence, that's how I was for a couple seconds. Like, I was in shock. I'm like, bro, this dude, he don't even need to see me work out. He just going to offer me a scholarship. So, of course, in his face, I've tried to play it cool, you know. Oh, yeah, man, like, I really appreciate it. Like, that means a lot, coach, like, all the work I've been putting in. He literally was only there for 15 minutes. The second he hit the door, shout out Savan. Savan knows this. Uh, he was in the gym with me, my teammate from high school. I was running. When I tell you I'm running laps around the gym, full speed, screaming at the top of my lungs, happier than anything. Like, that's one of the happiest days I've, I've ever had. Like, I was just so excited to finally have my first offer. And like I said in my other video, the second I get my first offer and it hits Twitter that I, Brian Thomas has been offered by Wofford University, my phone is blowing up. We wanted to be the first one to offer you. I told you guys before. We wanted to be the first one to offer you. We wanted to da 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 da. Hey, I'm coming to your high school tomorrow. I swear I had two schools come to come to Cal High School within the next three to four days, and they offered me when they got there. Two. I think after I got that first one, within a week, I probably had maybe it's on my Twitter, like on my old Twitter. I think I probably had maybe four or five, maybe after a week, like offers, like full rides. In my head, though, I understand that you know every other starter on my AAU program is has high major offers, right? When you looked at our state rankings, I was think at the time, maybe number 17, the 16 players that were ranked ahead of me all had high major offers. So now I'm like, bro, you know, I got 
Clemson, Georgetown, like I'm getting mail from UGA, LSU all over, right? But I still don't have that first high major one. You guys know the story about how I got the Mississippi State offer in a game I only had two points. What I didn't say is I had a lot of schools, like a lot of schools coming to see me in July. I was kind of like a tweener in terms of recruiting because I was a six seven center who was athletic. So depending on the high major conference, I might be able to get away with being a little smaller because I am athletic, but my build and my athleticism is made for the mid-major you know, level. So I was kind of fringe. I would have a lot of high majors that were interested. They just wouldn't pull the trigger and offer me, right? They were coming in July. So that's what I was thinking about. I had all my you know, mid-major offers and I'm, I'm looking at them. I'm really doing research. I took a couple visits, you know, but I'm really, I'm gonna be honest, I'm eyeing some high major offers that I wanna get. June comes around. We all know June is dead period in terms of recruiting. So I'm playing with my high school team. We got summer league. So we got a summer league game. I forget what day it is. I had already actually played a couple summer league games prior. Like this was maybe probably middle of June. It's at Kale. So I get to the school early. I'm getting ready for the game, you know, warming up on the side. Da, 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 da. You know, we start layup lines. You know how layup lines is. One line has the ball. One line is rebounding. So I'm in the line with the ball, going to shoot the layup. My teammates are rebounding. And I go, I go and shoot the layup. And I come down, land on my teammate's foot. All I hear is pop. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Remember, this is part two of a three-part series. Part three is dropping tomorrow where we're going to talk about, okay, what happened after that situation in June? How did it affect my recruiting? How did it affect my career? And you know where I ended up? We'll talk about that tomorrow. But like I always say, I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one, you know, evaluations or the breakdowns, hit my website that's in the description. Also, if you guys have any questions for me or you need advice, make sure you click the link for Noodle also in my description. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow with the next video.